You got me. You got me because I lied. I lied when I wrote in the video title that the method I'm showing you in this video can double your fetch speed. Because actually it can go beyond that. It can not only double the speed of your data fetching, it can actually triple the speed. So this video is about promise.org. What it is, how to use it, and when you should not use it. Especially with a look into React server components. So hey, my name's Toby and let's jump right in. Because the first thing you might ask yourself, and this is completely okay, is what is a promise again? What you typically use is async and await. So you want to await some data to finish. If we await something, we need to mark the function as async and that's already a promise. Because if we have a fetch to do async, we see this returns a promise of type any. So what is a promise? A promise just represents the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation and its resulting value. That's it, so nothing special. But now we might have this problem. Let's say we have a simple component in React and there we fetch three things. We fetch some to-dos, we fetch some posts and we fetch some users. And we do all that after each other. A pretty simple use case, right? This is a problem. And now I'm going to show you why this is a problem. Let's say request 1 takes up to 1.2 seconds, request 2 0.6 seconds and request 3 also takes 1.2 seconds. So we have a total of 3 seconds. So here is the point where we finished our fetch request and because of the fact that we await each of them we have this waterfall effect. So we actually need to wait for 3 seconds to finish things. And maybe you already asked yourself this question. Can we not optimize this? Because when request 2 don't need the information from request 1 and request 3 don't need the information from request 2 or request 1, why can we not run them concurrently? Because if we would do that, we would have a chart like this, where request 1 takes some time, request 2 takes some time, request 3 takes some time, and the slowest of all requests is the point where we are ready. So now we increase the speed of our fetches by three times. And that's exactly what promise.all is doing. So if we have this example page here, you see I start the time and I calculate a duration here. If we actually run the code here, we see there is a loading one two, three, and we are finished. So if we look in here, we see fetching data took 3006 milliseconds. Why is that exactly three seconds? Because in the functions, I just say new promise set timeout of 1000 milliseconds. So each request takes one second right now. But here's the thing, as I mentioned, post doesn't rely on to-dos and users is not relying on posts or on to-dos as well. So here's what we can do. I have this fast example and this fast example is now using promise.all. So we say await promise.all and now we give the promise.all function a array of our functions, but not with an await, just the function call. So fetch to-dos, fetch posts and fetch users. And what now happens is that all these three run concurrently. So the same as sketched out here. And you remember that each would take one second here right now. But if we actually now go to that example, which is the fast example, by the way, you find all the code in the description, you will see that things loading and it was very, very fast. And if we now take a look in the console, we see fetching data took 1002 milliseconds. So all three happen concurrently. And that's the effect of promise.all. So instead of having this waterfall, and let's be honest here, sometimes this can really end up with something like this. So a lot of fetch calls in one page. And if they not rely on each other, then it's always a great idea to use promise.all. But promise.all has a big problem. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Let's say I change this fetch to mock async function now with a fetch to mock error async function. And what this function is doing is it just throws an error. Maybe the database connection hasn't worked. Maybe the user is not authenticated. Whatever use case there might be. So if we now go in here and say, please console log me the to do's, the posts and the users, and we run this page, we see error fetching to do's. And that's the problem here. When one of the functions you provide here throws an error, you don't get anything. Because as you can see, I just get error fetching the to-dos. I don't get the posts or the users. Why they maybe have worked and returned something useful, I can't use it here. But luckily, we have a solution for that. And that is called promise.all. AI is already saying what to do, so we just click tab. Promise.all settled. Because promise.all settled means, okay, if something is not working in here, no problem. Because what we get back here is not the actual to-dos, but we get an object with a status. And this status can be fulfilled or rejected. So here now, for example, we check if the to-do status is rejected and then we just log console error fetching to-dos. And what you're now seeing down here is to-dos.length doesn't exist because to-dos has a new type now, which is the promise settled result. So what we need to do here is now, AI is already doing it for me. We check if the status is actually fulfilled 
And if it's fulfilled, we can then access the value, which is the string then, and then we can access the length. So that's what you actually get back here, a promise settled result with a status and a value. But you need to check the status to get access to the value. That's the whole magic. That's how it works. And that's why I would suggest you to use promise.all settled. But since this can get quite an amount of work, like checking every time the status and checking every time the value, you can also stick with promise.all. But in the beginning of the video, I said to you that I will show you when to not use promise.all because with Next.js or React server components, maybe you use it in Next.js, maybe you use it in React or in any other framework that uses the same concept, there's a problem because I wouldn't suggest you to use promise.all here. And that's because of the way how server components actually work. So let's say we have this simple server component in here and this fetches some user data and some to do. So the user is just used for my h1 and the to-dos are actually mapped over here, a typical use case, right? Why is that not good? Because this is again a waterfall, because the to-dos doesn't need the user. So what we could do here again is use promise.all, right? So we say await promise.all and we fetch these things and we get the user and to-dos. Cool. But I wouldn't suggest you to do it right here because we are at server components and server components are pretty cool. So what I would suggest you to do is the following. Let's be honest, this structure, especially for junior devs, is maybe not that understandable. Like, what is promised at all? That's usually something you don't learn at school or university. So what I would suggest is the following. We take this h1, or we copy this h1, make a const greeting, exactly like that, where we fetch the user and display the h1, and then we do the same for const to-dos, where we fetch the to-dos and display the to-dos. And now we have a greeting function and a to-dos function, and we can just do greeting, and we have to do we can remove that and there we go because we can also remove that and now we have the simple server component example which uses the greeting and the to do's and because of the fact that these are all server components because i don't have any use client here on the top this also is happening concurrently because these are simply so if server component example gets rendered greeting and to do's get rendered at the same time so the fetch call happens at the same time and the even better feature in here now is we can wrap the whole thing here in suspense so we can do it like that and the same for the to do's and now we have a loading state that are based on the children component itself and if we take a look at this now we refresh the page we see loading and there we go with the title and there we go with the to do's and that's so cool because if we do everything in the server component example then we would have just one loading state for the whole component and here we have the suspense boundaries which get that fallback which then you can for example customize with any cool skeleton components and to be honest that's way cleaner so what actually happened now is that we have siblings components like component a component b maybe also component c that are sending their requests and get ready just when they're ready they manage their loading state they manage the whole fetch logic and they are following the single responsibility principle cool but what if they are not siblings let's say we have a parent component a and maybe this also fetches some data and gets suspended then the children just start to render when the suspense brown is finished and then we have the same logic again that's how it works and that's what i would suggest because we have the same adventures like things fetch concurrently and we even have the benefit that we have the suspense boundary with the customized fallback for each component but keep in mind that there might be a use case where this is just not working out so you still should use promise.all if you can't do exactly what i did here so let's say this greeting component is not only fetching the user but also is fetching a cool greeting from anywhere then you don't have to go inside and make a small component out of everything because then you get into the component hell where you have too many components that are just doing a very very specific thing and that gets very very ugly so what you then just do is use promise.all so fetch here something use promise.all and you're good to go so yeah you learned what promise.all is how to use it and you also learned when to not use it for example in these react server components example thank you for watching this video and i hope you have a great day bye bye